It's official. Our woke leaders in D.C. have lost yet another continent, Africa. China has now officially surpassed the United States as Africa's number one trade partner. In fact, a recent poll revealed that 77% of African youth view China as the most important partner for their country's future success. But why? Why are Africans turning away from Biden and embracing Beijing? The answer is going to astonish you. When China launched its massive worldwide Belt and Road Initiative back in 2013, the African continent soon became one of its largest beneficiaries. The Belt and Road Initiative seeks to develop strong economic ties with developing countries through China's investing in massive infrastructure projects around the world. As such, China has lent African countries hundreds of billions of dollars to finance such projects as bridge building, high-speed rail systems, modernized ports and expressways. For many Africans, the Belt and Road Initiative proves that China sees Africa more as a land of opportunity, a continent with massive economic and cultural promise that can be realized with appropriate investment. The United States, on the other hand, is it's viewed as rather ambivalent towards the continent. I mean, historically, the United States has maintained a strategic interest in Africa due to its abundance of valuable resources, minerals, and other commodities. However, the United States' focus has predominantly been on resource extraction rather than fostering the long-term development and well-being of African nations and their people. This resource-centric approach has limited the U.S. engagement to a transactional level failing to address the holistic needs and aspirations of African societies. China's investments in Africa have manifested in transformative infrastructure projects that have left a visible impact on the continent. China's constructed over a thousand bridges, a hundred ports, scores of hospitals and schools. Moreover, it's developed an extensive network of roads and railways with 100,000 kilometers of roads and 10,000 miles of railway. It's no wonder that 49 out of the 54 African countries are currently participating in the Belt and Road Initiative with China, with the polls proving its popularity among African populations. But something much deeper is going on between Africa and China than a mere economic alliance. Something is happening between the two nations that's quickly isolating the United States with its current leadership from African affairs. But first, gang, many of you have been kind enough to notice that I've lost a few LBs of late. It's true, I've lost over 60 pounds. I've tried everything under the sun over the years to lose weight, and nothing worked until I discovered the fantastic nutrition coaching of PhD Weight Loss. PhD Weight Loss is a 100% over-the-phone nutrition and behavior coaching program I simply cannot possibly recommend enough. I was able to eat delicious meals all while reaching my weight loss goals in record time, and it was one of the easiest things I've ever done. They completely take out all the guesswork behind what, when, and how much to eat, they make the process painless, simple, and as easy as possible. Dr. Ashley Lucas has helped thousands achieve their health goals over the last 15 years. And guess what, gang? You're next. Do it. Change your life today by clicking on that link below or give them a call at 864-644-1900. Tell them Dr. Steve sent you. And join me and thousands of other patriots who are taking back control of our health. Click on that link below or go to myphdweightloss.com. Shortly after Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni signed into law one of the world's most stringent anti-LGBT legislations, Western leaders condemned the law and accused Uganda of human rights violations. Astonishingly, one of those leaders was none other than the supposedly conservative Texas Senator Ted Cruz, who called the law, quote, horrific and wrong and, quote, grotesque and an abomination. He went on to say, quote, all civilized nations should join together in condemning this human rights abuse. And then he added the hashtag LGBTQ. Again, this coming from one of America's supposed conservative leaders. Unfortunately for Western and African relations, condescending and insulting rhetoric like that coming from Senator Cruz is just par for the course. And African leaders aren't putting up with it anymore. Here's CNN's Christiane Anapur reprimanding, no, not interviewing, reprimanding the newly elected 
President of Kenya, William Rufo, on his views on LGBT rights. You yourself gained worldwide attention a few years ago when you said there was, quote, no room for homosexuality in Kenyan society. I want to know whether you still stand by that. We have um, Kenyan law. We have Kenyan constitution. We have our tradition. We have our customs. We will continue to respect other people's customs as they respect our customs and our tradition. I am very clear, I am very clear that we respect everybody and what they believe in, but we also have what we believe in and we expect to be respected for what we believe in. So there you have it. I mean, the nation of Kenya has its own laws. We have our own constitution. We have our own traditions and customs. We will certainly respect other people's customs, but only as long as they respect ours. We absolutely respect everyone, but we in turn expect to be respected for what we believe in. In other words, who the hell do you think you are, CNN or anyone else in the West, to tell us Kenyans how to live? Who are you to lecture us on human rights? And of course, what President Ruto is doing there is he speaking on behalf of the whole of the non-Western world, nearly 90% of the world's population. You may not have heard about this, but shortly after President, uh, the Chinese President Xi departed from Moscow in the recent summit with Russia, delegations from 40 African nations attended an official conference entitled Russia and Africa in a Multipolar World. And there Putin announced that Russia would be forgiving billions of dollars of African debt. And this is key as a gesture of solidarity in their support for traditional moral values and the resistance against the insanity of the woke West. We simply can't overestimate how much nations such as China and Russia and India and Turkey are exploiting the West's insane infatuation with wokeness for their own economic and military and political benefit. In many respects, 90% of the world's population wants nothing to do with wokeness. And they will self-consciously align with economic and military powers that promise to protect them precisely from that wokeness. For right or for wrong, China is one of those powers. And the West's current degeneration into woke madness is one of the fundamental reasons why Africa, and indeed much of the world, are turning away from the United States and increasingly embracing China, which means that until the West finally does away with its absurd, woke antics, China's leadership among the international community as a stalwart defense against such woke values is just beginning. Hey gang, I know what it's like to feel alone out there in these turbulent times, but I broke free. If you too have been looking for a community with like-minded patriots who are serious about resisting globalism, building a parallel economy, and having intelligent and deep fellowship on a regular basis, then you've come to the right place. In my Courageous Patriot Insiders community, we're building a close-knit movement of, by, and for patriots who are breaking free from the outrage and despair cycles of the mainstream media and taking on the fight against globalism. Every week, I deep dive into the content I can't share on big tech and give you the cliff notes on the truth of how patriots just like you are building up their communities, starting patriot businesses, and fighting the woke in both public and private all with a few history and political lessons from yours truly, of course. If you want to stop feeling alone as a patriot and stand together with this fast-growing community, be sure to click on the link in the description below. Don't wait. Join me and my Patriot Coalition today, and let's get fighting.